Sills. Big Sills, baby. And it is a football Monday. We start the program off already with some breaking news. And this is kind of like the calm before the storm. You're going to see a lot of teams jockeying around for some position players also as players are going to get cut next couple of days. Even the Eagles have to go from 91 players down to 53. So you're going to see a lot of player movement. And right out of the gate here, let's bring this up, Xander. The Dallas Cowboys have inked C.D. Lamb to a brand-new four-year contract worth $136 million. That's a little under Justin Jefferson of the Minnesota Vikings, who is going to make an annual salary of $35 million. However, making him the second-highest-paid non-quarterback in NFL history, the deal also includes a $38 million signing bonus, the largest ever given to a wide receiver. So again, think about what this deal is. They came in underneath Justin Jefferson's annual number of $35 million, but they gave him the most when it came to a signing bonus. That's the real money in this deal here too. So I'm assuming next up will be Dak Prescott, but we shall see. So. They gave a guy who led the NFL in receptions. Again, I get it as a slot receiver. Where do I put him on the pantheon of wide receivers in the NFL? Jefferson is the top wide receiver in the National Football League. Um, Second, I think it's debatable on whatever you feel your team could move the sticks with the personnel on the team. I'm a personal A.J. Brown guy, even though he moans and bitches and cries. He does produce. Um, I would make the comment that I don't have a problem with him being two. Devontae Adams is a special player. He's out there now in the shitty Raiders. He's in purgatory. Um, I'm not a Jamar Chase guy. I don't like finesse wideouts. That's why I'm not a Tyree Kill guy. I actually like the guy in Seattle, DK Metcalf. That's one of my guys. That's a guy that I could go into a football game with and I know he's going to knock people out in the secondary. I, I like big physical wideouts. Debo Samuel is not really a wideout. He's a football player used like a Swiss Army knife, as we said. Chase is great. Just not my cup of tea, man. By the way, guys, do me a favor here on this Football Monday. Please hit the like button. Okay, I appreciate you guys very much. Last week was one of the absolute best weeks of the year so far, and we appreciate you guys. Massive likes, massive views. Keep killing it. We appreciate it. 3.30, the co-host of Birds 365, as always, Xander Krause will join us. And from Fox 29 in Philadelphia, our dear friend Gary Cobb, former Eagle, will give us what he saw this past weekend at the Eagle game. We'll get to that here in a minute. So C.D. Lamb signs a brand new 136, four-year deal with the Dallas Cowboys, paying him an annual salary of about $34 million a year. So kudos to him. College football weekend started off this past weekend in Ireland. FSU was upset by Georgia Tech. I love seeing college football back. Game day in Ireland was kind of weird, but it was cool. Big schedule of college games this week. By the way, just a note, Miami Hurricane head football coach Mario Cristobal will be on with us on Friday at 3.30. Dabo Sweeney later in the week, the head football coach at Clemson. So we'll get him on later in the week as college football is big this week. Also, this is cut down week. This is cut down week. We're going to get to our takeaways here in a second. Um, How about this, man? What if you what was your overall takeaway of the Eagles preseason? What was it? I to me, every game I watched was underwhelming. I really didn't see anything that really made me go, wow. So all I got was practice comments, how good they were in practice. So I don't know. I'm not going to take it from reporters who are covering a practice and telling me how good they are. Practice? Okay. 
Well, I'm going to use an Iverson line. We're talking about practice. That's right. P.I., there was a preseason. Not for the Eagles, there wasn't. Not for the, not for the Eagles. By the way, all Super Chats go to the top. You guys are great. Aaron Judge will reach 70 home runs, Sills. Incredible. He may even reach Derek Jeter status. Hit his 50th and 51st home run over the weekend. That guy may actually end up, if he wins a World Series, as popular as Jeter. We shall see. Um, what do you here? Underwhelming, absolutely. Depth that we have sucks. Nolan's technique for his size needs a lot of work. Nolan Smith was terrible. And that was the biggest body of work that he's had since he's been an Eagle, and he was terrible. Okay? And he was going against bums, and he was terrible. This preseason was all about learning the new scheme. It sounds like they passed their quizzes in practice and failed their tests and games. Bob, excellent. I, I didn't see anything that was special in games. And you're going to go, well, they didn't put their first team out. Okay, well, then how the fuck do you know how good they are and what they worked on? Because why? They went against a sub-average defense? How do you know that? How, how? Again, I don't even know that. I can't sit here and be definitive even on my end. I, I don't know that. Here's my takeaway from the preseason and Minnesota. By the way, um, we're going to look at the 2024 Green Bay Packers as well. Um, that game was terrible. Here, here, just, just I tweeted out linebackers that they played didn't have any idea how the blitz. They were late under blitzes, and it just. I and I get it, twos and threes, but you would have thought there would have been more of a sense of urgency. Poor angles, poor effort, poor attitude. But then again, it embodies exactly how the Philadelphia Eagles look at the exhibition season. They don't really take it with a big emphasis that it's going to help your team. They think practicing on Tuesdays in a controlled environment where you don't tackle and you don't hit is all they need. I, I'm not a believer in that, when I, especially when I see some of the good teams that use the exhibition season for exactly what it is, high-quality reps. It's funny, isn't it? Kansas City got more out of their preseason again than the Eagles in the last three years have gotten out of their preseason. There's no coincidence that they're going for their third Super Bowl in a row. Or look at Baltimore, how they take their exhibition season. You know, Baltimore, they play every exhibition season to win it, all of them. And it carries over into the season for them. It's an attitude and it's a mindset. I mean, and get this, like you said, last year, and here's here's something that really just blows my mind again. And you're right, Andreas. So as Nick said last year he regretted not playing the starters in preseason. Why do it again? Well, because he was told. He was told by Howie and the owner that, get this, that they were going to only play one side of the ball. They were only going to play one side of the ball. You know what? I'm not even talking score here. I never bring up score in preseason football. I really don't. However, I bring up effort. I bring up attitude. I bring up flying to the ball. I didn't see any of that. It's like, well, you know what? The owner doesn't care about preseason. The GM doesn't. The head coach surely doesn't. That was a terrible effort. Nolan Smith is terrible. He has had a brutal preseason, and you're relying on him to be an edge rusher. You don't have an edge rusher with him. Stop lying to yourself. Stop lying. He's not good. How about this? I'll even concede this. He's not good yet. He's, he's not good. You can come up with every freaking lie you want. Just stop. Yeah, stop, James Jones. Stop lying to yourselves. He's not good. He's a weak edge player. Hey, man, 
He was a fabulous college football talent. That doesn't always necessarily translate to the next level, especially when you're so undersized like that. He is just not good. Seals, I expect a drop off when you run the threes, but when the twos are on the field, the product needs to be close to resembling game day output. They had one bad play away from seeing real time. Absolutely, Bob. Absolutely. That was shitty effort. It was shitty effort. Nolan needs to learn to become an off ball linebacker. Dude, the Eagles drafted a project, and that guy is not shown anything. He has not shown anything. That Calvin is right on. If I see Nolan Smith in a game, exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to run the ball right down his throat. Then I'm going to run it over at Bryce Huff's throat. You guys actually think you have run-stopping defensive outside edge rushers? Dude, the only guy you have that's worth the shit is Josh Sweat. Don't kid yourself. Bryce Huff and Nolan Smith are not three-down back, are not three-down edge rushers. They are not. They, Nolan Smith can't cover threes on a football team. How is he going to cover Josh Jacobs coming out of the backfield for Green Bay in week one? Who? You got Williams? Who? Milton Williams is going to play over the guards. They're going to play that five front. Sweats one end, huffs the other end. And uh, Nolan Smith's going to come in and rush. I mean, shit, you could make the argument that Project Kid, Jalex Hunt, may actually be a better football player than Nolan Smith right now. Right now. Hey, get this. I've seen Jalex Hunt more. Now. Then I've seen Nolan Smith, and I feel better about him than I do Nolan Smith. And he's the 30th pick in the draft. Hey, there's your defensive guru when it comes to drafting again. He can't draft an edge rusher. At least not in the first round. Holy cow. I'm watching this guy, and I'm watching his technique's terrible. Hey, by the way, just so you know how I look at it, they played him like three quarters. They wanted to get him as much reps as possible, Nolan Smith. And they put him in a position to succeed against threes. How is he going to line up against the elite players in the National Football League? The guy sucks, man. I'm not going to call him a bust yet, but he sucks. Seals Nick needs an excuse in January for another playoff loss. Is the reason for not playing starters to keep his gig. Hey, but Nick can always fire back and go, the fucking owner and general manager told me to do that. They told me to do that. Come on, man. Howie's gimmick drafting all Georgia players. Well, we're going to talk about them dudes too. That's Howie for you. Watch them cut the wrong guy too. Hey, Prince, there's not a chance in hell, and you know it, that they're cutting Nolan Smith. There's no chance. No way. He was a first-round pick. Nolan is out of position for sure. He should be in middle line. Absolutely not. He's another swimp. Dude, that guy does not look stout. Him and Dean don't look physical. Okay, Xander, someone says we missed uh, 34's super chat here. Big sales, or a uh, big bill. I mean, big sales. I think Lamb is overrated because it seems they tend to take plays off how he's more going to control the T.O.P. if they don't run. The time of possession is going to be key early. I was just talking to Xander about that. Time of possession is going to be big. And here's the thing, 34, you got to remember something here. You're going to throw the ball. That means three and outs. And you got Barkley already hurt. By the way, Barkley's hurt already? 
he's nursing back injuries and he's got some are saying that he's got like a disc issue already. Holy shit. Dude, I hope Barkley's ready for Green Bay. Someone, I mean, somebody who I trust told me he's got he's got a disc issue in his lower back. I mean, you're gonna need that guy. You're gonna need him. Still, the easiest person to lie to is yourself. Some of these players need to take a self inventory about their abilities. What do you mean, like? John Dotson, did you hear that guy talking? Did you hear him talking? Sounds like Nolan and Kobe need to get on. Hey, hey, 77, they need to eat a couple pizzas. They need to eat a couple pizzas. Hey, let me let me let me get to um let me finish up my takeaways. Cooper DeGene, you guys keep telling me he's going to start game one. He looked like he was completely out of place out there. You know, and I tweeted that out, and everyone's going, it's his first game. No dick. That's my point. No shit. He got turned around 100 times out there. He looked terrible. Schultz, hey, was he, what, did, did he enjoy being out there? Did he play fat? Yeah, but he didn't know what he was doing. I got multiple disc issues in my lower back, and I get up and put in a work every day. Give him a shot, send him out there. Daniel, <laughs> I got it, dude. I got it, man. I, 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 I got it. Okay? Okay, get this. Hey, look at this guy here. Spike says I'm lying. What would you see about Nolan Smith? He says I'm lying about Nolan Smith. He says, I'm lying about Barkley. Yeah, because that's what we do here. Are you fucking crazy? Why would I lie to you, Spike? What in the world do I get out of that? Lying to Spike. Holy shit, dude. You value yourself way more like some of the Eagle players do. That I would lie to you and sit here and make something up to what, appease you? Or to aggro? You're out of your mind. What is wrong with you? What would make you think that you're that important in my life to lie to? Good grief. Dude, you're out of your tree. We don't do that here. I, hey, I would rather tell you an opinion than lie to you. Have an opinion. No, I tried lying to my wife. It's not good. It means I don't eat that night. <laughs> nah, it's not good, man. Okay? He thinks Nolan Smith is good. The gene will be fine. Get this here. Guy, even Prince misses the point. I told you, be ready after the bye. That's what I said. I'm not saying he's not going to be fine. I said, you guys got him starting in the slot or in nickel in week one against Green Bay. That ain't happening. That ain't happening. That ain't happening. Okay? Right. Stay off the Coke and coffee. Hey, why don't you stay off your knees? Try to get off your knees for Howie. Tell you what I'll do. I'll stay off the Coke and coffee. You stay off your knees. Fair? Got a deal. Seals, I know it's just preseason, but why was it still embarrassing? Because they didn't give a shit. Because the ownership doesn't give a shit. The GM doesn't give a shit. Okay? I mean... I think it would be a mistake to have DeGene in the slot after having Quinion there all preseason. So do I. Quinion is hands down better in coverage. I want him on guys like Lamb, um, not DeGene. Right now, true. Okay? True. Let's see here. 
Um, Slay Rogers, Mitchell, Reed, and CJ. That's what I said would be your starting secondary, and it will be. Slay and Rogers at the corner, Reed and CJ in the safety position, and you're going to put Mitchell in the slot. Absolutely true. There's your secondary. There's your secondary. I said it a month ago. It was going to be that. But what I really like is this. Let's tee it up, baby. September 6th. No exhibition football. Let's go get the Green Bay Packers. Let's go get the Packers. Holy cow. Hey, let, yeah, let me get uh, Dotson here and how he spoke and then Sirianni here. Hold on. Yeah, here's Dotson. Yeah, here's Dotson. He was asked about over the weekend about being traded. Yeah, I was shocked. It was really something that, you know, I did not expect was to be traded. He said, Barkley said, you got to come into this place and you got to work. It's going to be a place of work. It's funny, Barkley didn't realize the previous two years, according to Javon Hargrave, was a country club. They decided to put some work in this offseason and in preseason. And I think it's benefited them, and I do think it'll help them in Green Bay and Brazil. I do. Um, he said this about, you know, he, he goes, you know, I, I, I practiced with them and, you know, they told me that they really liked me and respected me. Dude, they're talking shit to you. Nobody drafts you 16th. And then a year and a half later, trade you if they respect you and like you. And by the way, respect and like you have nothing to do with pro football. They didn't do right by you. This guy, again, he's a little delusional. This kid Dotson's a little delusional in who he is. He says, we got to find a role. I don't know what that role is yet. Dude, no, 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 no. Here's your role, son. You're the third wide out that's going to get, if you're lucky, 35 catches this year. That's your role. You don't know your role yet? Well, here, let me help you out. I know that sitting here doing my show, what your role is. Okay? Seals, this is nothing new. That's why Eagles are one in three in Super Bowls. They do everything the wrong way, and we have an amazing talent and never cash in. Correct. You do everything that's needed to get to the game, and you don't do everything you need to finish the game. Okay? Hey, get this. Here's, here's, um, here's Prince's benchmark for um, Dotson. He's better than Watson. Watkins, okay. okay. 16 pick in the draft is better than Watkins. Congratulations. Wow, that's a real reach. You mean more like a reach around. This guy's delusional. I don't know what my role is. Hey, Dotson, here's your role. You're the third wide out. We're going to use you as a decoy on the numbers when we want to put Devontae and AJ um, in the slot to try to create some more space for Jalen to move people around. That's your role. You are third man on the pecking order. Maybe not even that. You're probably the fifth outside of Barkley and Goddard. I mean, relax, kid. I know your role sitting here right now. He doesn't know his role. He goes, I'm already starting with the playbook. Great. Well, congratulations. Welcome to the NFL. Um, 
He said he doesn't have a problem playing in the slot or out on the numbers. I don't think you understand something here, Dotson. You were brought to the Eagles to be the third wheel in a wide receiver room that they don't really like. Get a clue. You're not that good. You are not a one or a two receiver in this league. You are a third dude. You're in the room with Quez Watkins. Those type of dudes know your role. This kid still thinks because he's a first rounder, he's Devontae Smith. He's not. He's not. By the way, this is defending Devontae and AJ. That's what I'm doing here. Those are your top dogs. You see, just like in the mafia, you have captains, and then you have lieutenants, and then you have people who work down there, and those are the people that go out and steal shit. You're down there with the riffraff. That's who you are. So why the F are you hating so hard? I'm not hating. I want the kid to know what hating. How is hating telling a kid his role? Hating? Look at Marshall. I'm just trying to tell you the kid his role, not hating. This is who you are, son. Hey. This, look at this. Let me show you how delusional this guy is. How many guys have you ever seen that were the third wide receiver on a football team make all pro? Like none. Zero. Very hard for a two to make it. But he's going to be an all pro. Okay. Dotson's going to make history. Hey, wait a minute, though. Let's do this. Hey, Marshall, know your role. The quicker you know your role, the better off the team will be. AJ, Devontae, Barkley, Goddard, Dotson. When they're passing meals out, you're the fourth guy that gets his plate. JB, go get this. I'm hating on Dotson. No, I'm not I'm telling you who you are. I'm telling you who you are. Says, don't you have to hold yourself to that standard if you get drafted first round? I thought you're supposed to have that mentality. Um, yeah. I'll buy a little of that. You're supposed to have a little ego. But when you get cut or traded a year and a half, I would think you should be more humbled. That an organization quit on you, traded you into division. Aren't you humbled? What attitude would you have if you were the 16th pick in the draft and your team came to you a year and a half later? And traded you to a team that was your bitter rival in the division. Would you not have a problem with that? Really? I would be humbled and hungry. Daniel goes like this, shit, I think he'll be the fifth option behind Barkley. Probably so. Um... Marshall Falk was traded. Yeah, you know for who? Edger and James. Both are in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I don't know. Looks like that deal got worked out well. <laughs> hey, Seals, do you think Goddard stays out? No, I don't. No, I don't. Here, here, King. I would be disrespected. Dude, Washington took a giant shit on him. Took a giant shit on him. Name a wide receiver with his talent. 
I, what talent? They quit on him. Throughout the entire offseason, you said your team doesn't have a third. Now, now we do. What's the problem? What, what, what did you not hear me say that your role is being the third wideout? Uh, what, 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 what did you miss, Prince? I didn't say it was a bad deal. I'm telling you that the kid still thinks he's somebody he's not. I didn't say that. He's going to get 30 catches. About 350 yards, being a three guy. Is that the 16th pick in the draft? Is he supposed to say, no, no, no. What, what, what is he supposed to say? My role is to come here and help the team any way I possibly can especially after being basically cut or traded in the division. Are you crazy? He's a third number three. He's a, he's a good number three. This guy still thinks he's the number two guy. It ain't happening. It's over. You'll never be a two unless someone gets injured in Philadelphia. Ever. And you're not quite good enough anyway. I believe in Dotson, no matter the role. Unlike the unreliable Redskins, they don't get nothing right. Well, I think they got Terry McLaurin right. Hey, what round was that guy taken in? Could somebody tell me what round Terry McLaurin was taken in? Because they got him right. Was he a first rounder? Here, here's something. Here, here we go too. He was asked by a reporter what he had when it came to his weakness and maybe a weakness that he had. And he goes, well, I really don't have one. I just got to work on being the best I can and work on the playbook. This guy doesn't think he has a weakness. Then why were you dealt? Then why were you dealt? Fans got to stop hyping every player we trade as if it's a game changer. Pipe down. No shit. So wait a minute. Terry McLaurin was the third rounder. This kid was the 16th pick. You don't think they know the difference when they see a star receiver versus the 16th pick? McLaurin's a star. He's a star. Please hit the like button. Now, here's Nick Sirianni um, in his high school speech after the third preseason game. Um, he was asked a question about Dotson. He goes, I liked him two years ago. I guess he was part of the 30 visit, and they brought him in. And he goes, I liked him then. Um, he didn't like the way they played lack of focus in that game against Minnesota. They said that they look more at the practices than the organized team practices. And there's no question that they take those organized team practices with a higher emphasis than they do quality game reps. Why would Andy Reid put Patrick Mahomes in a situation where another team could dive at his knee and not just practice him and practice at Arrowhead in the preseason and just keep him in a box or a garage? Why, why, why would he do that? Why, why, why would he do that? Why would he? He played him in two of the three preseason games. Long, lengthy times, too. Why would he do that? Why would he play a guy who's going after NFL immortality this year with three straight Super Bowls, playing in an exhibition game that doesn't fucking matter? And the Eagles take the exhibition season and have no caring about getting game reps, communicating right. Remember what Vic Fangio said? Vic Fangio said, those practices are not real football. Those practices are teaching tools. That's not real football. 
And I got guys like ESP posting on the WIP Twitter that the camp was insane. Okay. It's good to know. You, you spent $200 million on your offense. You better be ready to go. Dude, that doesn't impress me. You spent $200 million on your offense. You better be ready. You guys tell me all the time. Xander says it too. Shit, sales. I don't want to hear that. You make $50 million. Yeah, I don't want to hear it either. $200 million you spend. I don't want to hear it. Okay, I don't want to hear it. Um, I know it's your channel. You decide what you talk about. But I'm asking, can you talk about the upcoming season, like how our defense needs to step up and make a Super Bowl? I'm going to get to all that, my friend. Okay, I'm going to get to all that. I promise. Why Fangio staying in the booth so nobody won't throw shit at him when they see this trash-ass defense. Troy, I don't think that's why he's doing it. I don't think he wants any influence of anybody saying any shit in his ear and that he's going to make the calls himself. And I like that, actually, him being up there. This looks like a good take. Sills, you remember the Colts team Manning was on that had a high-scoring offense, but their defense was so bad, it was always high-scoring games. You think there could be something like that this year? Hey. A tube, maybe you want to do a little research. Maybe the year that they won that Super Bowl in um, Indianapolis, I could have swore that that Colts team, even with Bob Sanders and Dwight Freeney on it, I could have swore they were 27th. I could have swore they were 27th that year, the year they won that Super Bowl in Indy. I could have swore that that, and then they got really hot playing defense in the in the uh, postseason. I could have swore that that's how that played out. Okay, I could have swore that's how that played out that year when Manning was scoring all that. And yeah, they and, and if I'm not mis mistaken, David, didn't they have Freeney and Brackens? Right? Didn't they have Freeney and Brackens? That was their their edge rushers. I thought it was Brackens and, and Sweeney that they had. Um, making excuse to have a trash defense. Uh, we need good players, not more offensive players. Try to outscore everyone. The 2024 Eagles are the 2016 Cowboys. Go look up their rosters. Great offense with terrible defense. Oh, Mathis, Robert Mathis. That's right. Thanks, Ray. Okay, it was Mathis. Seals, a lot of people like Dotson then. Dotson, uh, Washington loved him then. Unfortunately, it's how he projects into our system today that matters. He's a third dude. He's a third guy. That's all I care about. He's not a one or two. Hey, if he was, you traded him to be a one or two, you're in trouble. You traded him to be a three, perfect fit. That's what his skill set is now on the Eagles. He's a number, get this, on the Eagles, he's a three. He's a three. Seventy-seven goes. I was at that AFC Championship game that year. Sanders came back healthy late in the season, and their defense played. Good late in the season and in playoffs. That, that's exactly what happened. He had missed a ton of games. They put him back in there in the secondary, and they got really hot in the postseason. He, he got really hot. The same reason we sucked at tackling last year, especially now with the hip drop tackle being removed. Miss tackles is going to scare me this year. Yeah, it's going to be a factor everywhere in the league, though, too. Guys, please hit the like button. Disciple. We can't improve today's football to the early – we can't compare today's football to the early 2000s. That was the golden age of football. Now the NFL is more like the XFL. Now, they, don't want, they don't want tackling. You know how Dana White doesn't want grappling? He wants strikers at USC. Why? Strikers create ratings. Grappling doesn't. 
But yet grappling still is, that's what makes Khabib the greatest of all time next to Jones. Okay, those guys are great. Um, I'm glad he got paid, put more pressure on y'all to sign Dak and Parsons. I got to tell you something, Martin, if I'm Dak Prescott, I know this. I have more of a chance of making more money in the open market than I do in Dallas. If I sign with Dallas, I'm going to get a hometown discount. Let me get in the open market. You, 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 and plus, Dallas can't trade you. So Dallas is just going to let Dak walk out the building come next March? What a colossal disaster. Jerry Jones is in a colossal disaster right now. Either pay him 60 or don't pay him. He's leaving. He's leaving. And he'll make more. If Kirk Cousins can make 50, he'll make 60. He'll make 60. Uh, uh, Jerry wants Dion's son. I don't think much of that kid. I want. I, I don't. I don't like his attitude. And win more than four games. Okay, Nelson Aguilar wasn't a high draft pick. That didn't work out for us, but he fits perfectly in the Ravens scheme. That's because the Ravens don't throw the ball. Nelson Aguilar was a first rounder. I forgot that. I didn't know that, Prince. I didn't know a hey, Nelson Aguilar was a first rounder. I had forgotten that. W w was Nelson Aguilar a first rounder? Was he the 16th pick in the draft, Nelson Aguilar? Can somebody help me? Prince is talking about Nelson Aguilar not fitting into a system. What 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 round did he go? Was he down in the bottom first round? I, I'd forgotten that. I didn't know Nelson Aguilar was a first rounder. 20th? Okay. I okay, I, I didn't I didn't remember that. Um, hey, they don't throw the ball though. How many targets does he get a year in Baltimore? 40? 50? Aguilar was arguably the best player on the Eagles offense aside from Foles and Super Bowl. He stunk, though, with pretty much his career. And, um, you know? No, no, hey, Prince, they don't throw him the ball. They don't throw him the Alshon Jeffrey. 45 to look at this. Yeah, yeah, Prince is right. Nelson Aguilar does fit in. 20th pick in the draft gets 20 targets. Okay. Hey, I bet he does fit in. <laughs> there you go, Prince. The 20th pick in the draft gets 45 targets. But how many catches did he have last year? 20? Oh, my God. So let's go to – let's finish up Sirianni's high school speech over the weekend. He said Nolan Smith played well. I was like, this guy won't stop lying. He just won't stop lying. Hey, James Bradbury's making your football team. He's making your football team. James Bradbury has made the Eagles. <laughs> oh, man. Why don't you just cut the guy? S save yourself. Seven million bucks. Four million against the cap. You have 22 million or 27 million now. Bradbury's making the team. Bradbury is going to be inactive every week. See this right here? Not happening. You know why? You're paying him 11 million bucks. So you're going to pay, you'd rather pay, get this. Let me show you how the real doesn't get football here. Here. So you're going to pay a guy $11 million to not be active when you could have cut him for $4 million against your cap. Saving you $7 million in salary. And you're going to pay a guy who's the highest paid 
the second highest paid player on your defense, and you're going to have him inactive. Solid. Solid. Let me see. Huff. Bradbury. Slay. Gardner Johnson. And you're going to put an inactive guy making 11 million bucks. Not active for... Okay. Why didn't you cut him? You could have freed up a roster spot too. Oof. Bradbury's playing on a defense. He's playing on defense. They're not keeping him on the bench. Some of y'all don't understand how money works. Pete, right on. If you pay him, you play him. You don't sit him. You don't sit him. Get this. Bradbury's getting cut. Okay? You cut Bradbury. So that means you go into the season with only one experienced corner. Is that right? Is, is that correct? Would you take Ernest Jones? Maybe leaving the Rams. You're not going to pay $10 million a year for him. He's gonna. He wants a new contract from the Rams. You think the you think the Eagles are gonna pay him twelve million dollars, ten to twelve million dollars? Right. Hey, John goes like this. Rogers, you trying to tell me you think Rogers is experienced at corner? Where's that? What what are you talking about? How's Rogers, John? An experienced corner. He was a special teams guy. In Indianapolis. What are you talking about? Keely Ringo? What? You have no... Ex so if you get rid of him, the only experienced cornerback you have is Slay, really. Who else? JM, who else has experience? Guys, the guy didn't play last year. He did some good things with the Colts. I know. But has he started 17 games or 16 games as a corner? I don't remember that. What experience do you have at the cornerback spot? You're going to go into Green Bay against cornerbacks. Steals, they're going to get experience sitting on the bench at some point. They got to play. Like I told Xander and I told you, if you guys compromise losing and you're okay with it early to be better late, I'm all right with that. But you got to have a lot of patience and you got to have a coach that's going to be able to take the slings and arrows because if that team goes one and three and your offense looks good and your defense is getting worked over, but you see improvement, you're going to have to bite the bullet and wait till that thing matures. The record that you think you're going to get is not going to be anywhere near it. But you could be playing like a 14-win team by the end of the year if you do this right. Here. Somebody asked a question earlier. Sills, how, how can we make our defense better? Well, your offense can. No three and outs. Long sustained drives. Long as Barkley's back is good. Okay. Oh, hey, Prince, I must have. No, no. What other cornerback outside of Bradbury has played significant time at cornerback with game experience? Who? I must have missed it, Prince. Who? Outside of Bradbury and Slay. Tell me, Prince. I must have missed it because I. You, hey, help me out on my research. Who? I must have missed it. Ringo has experience playing corner. You call what that guy did last year, experience at corner. Who's Eli Rogers? Rogers does, 
All these guys have limited experience. That's all limited experience. Avante Maddox is in the slot. Hit the like button. When you make a comment, try to be factual. So here. Nick Sirianni says he really likes the linebacker room. Gardner Johnson hasn't played corner in two years. He and Nick Sirianni likes the linebacking room. <laughs> oh boy. He was asked about motion too. And he goes, yeah, it really does a nice job masking some of the things that we want to do this coming season. This guy has no idea what's even going on on his own football team. Wow. I mean, every time I listen to him talk, it's just, why do you bring him out there? It's embarrassing, actually. When players see him get in front of the mic, you just must close your eyes. All this is word salad stuff that he has. Freaking crazy. I mean, it's crazy how they, I mean, I, I was, I, I listened to it twice because I'm hoping something was going to be said. You know what's funny? I get more out of Vic and Kellen, and Kellen doesn't really say much. 85. I think Jalen will throw 40 passes a game. You'll win nine games. So hasn't played football in 60 years, but he has experience. You played three seconds. F out of here. Hit the like button. Um, you mean Nick? The Howie hand puppet. Thank you, Jacob. I appreciate that. Appreciate your super chat too, Prince. Appreciate it. Thank you. Completely agree about big physical wide receivers. Across the season, they consistently produce regardless of conditions. How often do you see cold games where little guys with big names not showing up unless you're in New England? Um, I think Howie has spent $200 million on this offense because – he knows they are the best chance they have to allow this defense enough time to grow. Okay, Daniel, that's okay thinking. Um, get this. Here's get this. Arthur Belichick was great at pressers too. No, he was great at winning Super Bowls. You can have a shitty press conference when you win six and have eight rings, Arthur. Bill Belichick can sound whatever he wants when you have eight rings, you know? And when you coach Brady and Lawrence Taylor, you can sound any way you want in a press conference. Any, any, any way you want. <laughs> hey, talking about Sirianni and Belichick in the same conversation, holy cow. It is it is like it's like talking about like cotton candy and a laxative. That's how different they are. Jesus Germany, man. We're gonna take a look at the Green Bay Packers here in a minute. I just thought that the whole thing, man. I mean, they didn't give a shit about wanting to be that. I shouldn't have got off the bus. They shouldn't got off the bus against Minnesota. Why even go through the motions? Did you see how for how far the corners and safeties line up on defense? Can't see them on a TV screen. Hey, get this, Troy. Troy, 
my daughter was watching the game. And then we watched, I think it was the Denver Broncos against the Arizona Cardinals. And we watched them yesterday. I think it was. My my daughter, who's a big-time rugby player, goes like this to me. Dad, why were the linebackers for the Eagles so far off the ball and the secondary guys so far back? I go, because they don't they don't have talent. She's like, what do you mean they don't have talent? I go, they don't have the talent to cover those guys. She goes, well, why is Denver so close to the line of scrimmage? Because their backers are better. And they got Patrick Sertain on the back end. She goes, what do you mean? I go, oh, one corner can make an entire difference like that in your entire defense. And if you got a linebacker like the Broncos have that can cover tight ends and hit and fill gaps like he did, you could play closer to the line of scrimmage. And that zone in the middle, the safeties are going to be able to be a team that can cover. Their defense looks a lot better, plus Arizona doesn't have much to offer. She didn't understand how the Eagles were playing so far off the ball. I go, it's called too high safety. He knows he doesn't have the talent, so what he does, he's enticing you to stay in a, in a shark swimming pool, hoping that he could take a bite out of you. He's baiting you to go into the middle of the field because that's where he wants you. He doesn't want you on the numbers because that's where explosion plays happen. He wants you in the middle of the field where pursuit is. That's exactly what Vic is doing. Vic knows he doesn't have the linebackers. He barely has the pressure. Right now, going into the season, this is what I've seen. You barely have pressure. Your linebackers are very questionable. And your cornerback play, we'll see. We'll see. Well, Sills, what about Quinion? I don't know. We'll see what he does, how he, how he covers. That's me. I'm Jordan Love. I'm going right at him. Let's find out what he knows, what he doesn't know. He's only been an NFL player for what? Five months? Let's see what he does. Go after him. You go after youth and people who don't know what they're being asked to do yet. I see Cooper DeGene on the field. I'm going right at that guy. Bryce Huff, I'm running right at him. Nolan Smith, I'll do whatever I want to him. Dude, I could take that guy and put that guy in a uh, in, in, in a in a square dance. That's what he looked like he was doing out there playing on on uh, Saturday. Look, he was in a square dance. It was funny to watch. No, no, listen, listen. Here's the problem that you have with the Eagles in evaluating them. There is no question. You guys have a 13-14 win offense. There is no doubt about it. No doubt about it. What, 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 that's incorrect. Miami had talent. It played the same way. You know why this is this is scheme. No, it's talent. This is talent. And, exper- and, and experience. By the way, Vic got torched too with two good corners, Ramsey and Howard. He's, you're you going to try to tell me the Eagles have better corners than the Dolphins? So fucked up sometimes, Prince. You do not. Green Bay will do the same thing to us that they did to Dallas. Are you going to see a lot of crossing patterns? Tight ends will be wide open. Absolutely. Um, we get to the Green Bay Packers. Xander will join us at three thirty. Gary Cobb will join us at 4.30 Eastern from Fox 29. <clears throat> um, Dome says, Sills, what was Jonathan Gannon's secret for success in 22? Experience? Experience? Level of quarterbacks that you played that year? The schedule was one of the weakest in the league? Came off of four wins? Um, no, not came off of four, but was one of the weakest schedules, and massive health. You were exceptionally healthy. Okay, get this. See this right here? This is what really makes me crazy sometimes. Packers offensive line sucks. And what, your D-line's great? You gave up 138 yards a game rushing last year, and you were 31st last year in pass defense, 
and you didn't get anywhere near the quarterback, where'd you improve? Another year with Jalen Carter? Okay. Good that Jordan Davis has got to step up and show us something. Everybody wants love. We always give people the benefit of the doubt. I don't give anybody the benefit of the doubt, especially in football. Who are you? I don't need to give Mahomes the benefit of the doubt. No, Mahomes earns the benefit of the doubt if he has a bad game. Seals, for this defense to grow into a respectable unit, J.H. will need to have a great grasp of situational football. Um, check down, under soft coverage, attack the middle to move the change and establish the run. Oh, this whole season is going to be based totally off of what Jalen does. Uh, James is right. And get this, James. That's not just a you take. That was Jason Kelsey's take. That was Jason Kelsey's take. C24, this was a scouting report issue on Cooper DeGene when he was at Iowa. He notices it now. Scouting report plays itself out. Um, DeGene is not a corner. I hope they move him to safety. I do think they will too. But then again, wait a minute. Hold on, guys. That's the first game off IR. My point was that he can't play. My point was he won't play week one. If he does, it'll be on special teams. Okay, I mean, hang in there. Let me get to the Green Bay Packers. He missed all the training. That was the only point, John, I was making. Not that he couldn't play. Okay? Not that he couldn't play. Well, okay. Here's the Green Bay Packers. Once again, see, see, JB, I don't know what you're talking about. And exactly, watch this. Calm down. One preseason game, right? Exactly what my point was. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. That was my point. Big sales, asking, not being sarcastic. Fair enough. How is it fair to judge this defense when we haven't seen them play much snot? How can you give something the benefit of the doubt when you don't have a, a word on it either way? And you know you're less experienced on that side of the ball this year than you've ever been in the last three years. Just asking, not being sarcastic either. And multiple positions. You have look, look at this. Here, I wrote this down before let me get to the pack before I get to the Packers. Here, Tony, and I'm not being a dick to you, dude. I promise. Okay. I, I promise you. Prince, I love Seals, but it's dumber than rocks sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Um, here. It's step up time. It's step up time for these guys. Jordan Davis, I'm sick of it. You're either gonna be um a dude, or you're going to be a great player. You're not a great player right now. Stop blowing up who this guy's not. He's not a great player. You're, does he have great talent? I don't care about his great talent. I care about production. He's not productive. And you know what I mean by productive for him? He doesn't have to make a ton of tackles or sacks. He's just got to be effective in the run game. And he wasn't. 
He wasn't. So it's time, kid. 13th pick. It's time. Nicobe Dean. I, I, don't, I don't know what else to say. I'm going to say very little. I have no faith in you. I've not, I've seen a little bit. It looks a little better. But you know, my big thing is with him too. He won't last. He has shown one thing for sure. He gets hurt. There's no question. His his frame and his body makeup have stunted his growth as a player. You know why? He's always hurt. Always. It's time to do something. Dude, Nolan Smith. I mean, got to, it's time to step up, son. I mean, you know, you're the 30th pick in the draft. I mean, dude, Jordan Davis has shown more. For sure. I've seen nothing that makes me say he can play ball. By the way, I'm not bringing up any of the rookies this year. I haven't seen them play yet. So I don't know. Jason goes, Nolan Smith hasn't had reps. Even in practice, he hasn't. You know why? He hasn't earned them. Hey, Tyler Steen was drafted in the third round to be the starting right tackle or guard, I mean to take over for Isaac Sayamalo. I don't know. They're going to need him in depth. Lost his starting job because he was hurt. It's part of playing ball. Part of playing ball is health. Tyler Steen gave a starting job away because he couldn't stay healthy. Okay. How about this one here? This may shock you. Hey, Kenny Gainwell, he's had really a nice camp. He's in a contract year. Eagles like him. Kellen Moore looks like he likes him. He reminds me of Tony Pollard and how Pollard was using the Kellen Moore offense. Barkley thinks the world of him. Didn't realize how strong he was. Hey, Kenny Gainwell, you step your game up a big time game here. Eagles might just give you a contract that's compatible for them and you and keep you in Philly. Got a chance here. Step up and be a not just a guy, a dude. Because right now he's a dude. He's Boston Scott. It was just cut by the Rams. He's probably better than him. Okay. Milton Williams. Hey, you want $20 million? $15 million? Whatever. I don't care if it's in Philly or New York. I'm going to go out and play my ass off this year. By the way, I have a gigantic sign for sale on my chest if I'm Milton Williams. Whether the Eagles sign it, they buy it, whether someone else does, I'm getting paid. If Milton Williams put 60 tackles up and six and a half sacks like Fletcher had, He's going to get paid. Probably not in Philly, but he's going to get paid. And if that guy outplays Jordan Davis, that's an indictment on Davis. If he outplays him, I'm going to have a gigantic for sale sign on me. No doubt. Hey, Isaiah Rogers, I've heard a lot about you. I really think the Eagles really wanted a way to hear for you after your gambling charge, and they did. Seems to be a lot of love for you. You're not the most physical guy on the planet, but then again, now that you've taken the hip drop tackle out of how you're going to get wide receivers on the ground now, I'm not sure that matters any longer in today's NFL. I'm not sure that matters. 
It's covering dudes. That matters. Tell you what, Isaiah Rogers is set up for today's NFL than he was for 10, 15 years ago. NFL. He couldn't play in the NFL 10, 15 years ago because you had to be a physical corner. Now you don't. You, you don't have to be a physical corner. Garner Johnson, last two years, 34 games, he's played 15. This guy's made a mountain of money. He made $16 million off of two thousand, And the rest of it has been marginal. Injuries and marginal. Played a few games last year. Got paid seven and a half, eight million. Now he's making eight now. He's made $16 million off those six sacks or six interceptions in 22. He's played 15 ball games in two years. I don't know. He's missed half the games. He's going to have to show us. He can stay healthy. Hey, Grant Calcaterra. I don't know, man. They need a number two wide tight end. And I don't think you're it. You don't have to be a great pass catcher. And you don't have to be a great blocker. But you got to be able to do both, being a number two tight end. You got to be able to do both. All right? I mean, and then non-player. Time to step up, Nick. You know how Nick can win his team and the fans back? You know how he can do it? Just show some patience. And don't be so stupid at the um, podium. You know, what's his name says perfectly that Bill Belichick doesn't have a good press conference. You know, the one thing that Nick does that, or you know, the one thing that Belichick does that Nick can't do? Belichick gives you the same answer for 25 years. And we're on to Cincinnati. We coach, they play. Got to coach better, got to play better. On the Cincinnati. Coach, what happened? Well, we got to coach better. Coach, what happened over here? We got to play better. What happened over here? He got hurt. I'm not the doctor. I'm the coach. You can talk to the medical people. Any other questions? Coach, you ever think about making it? We just got to coach better and play better. And Nick give you some stupid-ass diatribe and some word salad answer, and you're like, you don't owe the media, and you don't owe the pit anything. You don't owe Jeff McMullen anything. You don't have to have them like you. It's not important to go out of your way for the media to like you. Who cares? Their job's to cover you, not like you. I don't get some coaches sometimes with that misnomer. I don't care if John McMullen likes me or not if I'm the coach of the Eagles. He covers the team. He's got a job. I got a job. I'm not looking to be your friend. If it happens, great. If it doesn't, I don't care. How does that have anything to do with doing your job? It's nothing to do. I mean, I, I said Jeff McClain. Um, stop fan coaching. Don't know what you're talking about. I don't think you're talking to me. I mean, I don't care at all if the media likes Nick Sirianni. That's nothing to do with it, Nick, but he goes out of his way. Because you know why he does that? Nick goes out of his way because he hopes They'll write nice columns about him and be nice to him at press conferences and say nice things about him. Who cares? They'll say nice things about you when you win. And they'll turn on you in a Philly second when you lose. Do you not get that? It's so dorky. 
But then again, that's Bob Lang and his henchmen that make it so like that. It's important for Nick to be like, liked. By who? I don't even care if the team likes him. Dude, let me tell you something, Nick. Jimmy Johnson coaching a team, it had no bearing on whether or not he liked you or you liked him. He was bringing you in because you were his type of player, and that's all you needed to know. And he coached you. He wanted you. You were there because he liked you and thought you could bring something to his team. That's it. The fact you're in his building and on his roster was all you needed to have. All that other stuff, you better win. You better be on time, and you better be in shape. Other than that, we'll find out what kind of talent you have. Had nothing to do with like. This organization knows how bad they messed up with Shane. Got to Indy. If they could do it all over again, Shane would be the coach right now, and Nick would be out of a job. Bubba, I'm not sure about that. Bubba. Let me ask you a question here, Bubba. Let's do this. Nick's here. Jeffrey Laurie and Howie Roseman. What style of coach, Bubba, do you think the owner and the GM prefers to work with? Doug Peterson or Nick Sirianni? Who do you think they enjoy working? And what style do you think the owner and the GM enjoy working more with? Nick style or Doug style? Green says, Nick. Eagle says, someone they can control. Nick, Nick. Nick, because he's a yes man. Okay. See what I'm saying, Bubba? By the way, please hit the like button. Thank you, Twiz. You see what I'm saying here? Bubba, it has everything to do with being able to work with the style of coach you want. Okay? M. Reyes goes, who gives a shit? Doug needed to be Ken for his shitty decisions anyway. So M. Reyes doesn't think that Nick Sirianni's shitty decisions last year that derailed the football team and imploded a football team a year ago and drove the quarterback's numbers into uh, 15 turnovers and firing of coordinators in the middle of the season. And all of that, that imploded a 10 in one year, deserved to be fired. But Doug will won you a Super Bowl, and the general manager was undermining you and sabotaging a roster. He did. Okay. Thanks, M. Reyes. Um. He sure didn't. I'm Reyes. Hell of a take. Hell of a take. Nick didn't put the pen to paper for these people. No idea what you're talking about. Nick at Nick who? Oh, that Nick. Every day, Nick hate. How we hate. New hate for Dotson. Dean hate. Um, Nick hate? I hate that coach. Yes. How we hate. I hate the way Howie Roseman drafts on defense. Yes. Dotson, know your role, son. You don't like it? JB, it's a you thing. Um, it's intentional 
to filibuster a press conference. I think it's important for a great head coach just to go, well, let's just move on. Um, crazy. Here, get this. Hey, folks, M. Reyes says this. He says that I'm going to blame Nick for Hertz's issues. Who do you blame then? He said it was his offense. All year long, he said it was his offense. Supposedly, he's the one that recommended Brian Johnson. The front office decisions. Wait a minute. I'm convinced. I'm confused here. You don't blame. So why then is the quarterback and the head coach having to mend their relationship? Why is that being reported? That they didn't get along. You're making shit up, guy. You're making shit up. All right. Do me a favor. Please hit the like button. We're also going to talk a little bit later on at the top of the hour of the Green Bay Packers of 2024. Gary Cobb will join us at 430 Eastern. Where are we right now on the like list? Guys, please hit the like button. You've absolutely killed it. And I so appreciate it. Thank you guys a lot, man. We'll get more of an insight, too, on what all the injuries uh, to the team. 157. Well done, guys. Let's let's kick it up. Let's see if we can get to 200 by the top of the hour here. Please hit the like button. Keep it here, National Football Show. If you missed any of today's show on the Jacob Media channel, listen to the podcast on your way home. Available on YouTube, Apple, and Spotify.